Welcome back to Miniature Game Montage and my first Warhammer 40,000 battle report. I'm going to attempt to use 9th edition rules, but I have not played Warhammer 40,000 since 6th edition or so, so I feel pretty rusty. I would ask that you help me correct anything I missed in the comments so we can ultimately improve. If you were unfamiliar with my battle reports, they are a mixture of video and photos and, of course, some dice rolls. Today we have 500 points of Necrons versus Dark Angels in the Mission Only War. I hope you enjoy. All right, up for the Necrons. We've got a Cryptek with a Chronometron and Veil of Darkness. He is going to be surrounded by two groups of ten warriors with their Gauss Flares. We'll have three Necron Destroyers and three Canoptic Wraiths. And up for the Dark Angels, we will have a Talon Master with Twin Assault Cannon and Heavy Bolter. We'll have four Ravenwing Black Knights and five Ravenwing Bikers, as well as five Tactical Marines. Those guys are still employed, right? All right, after deployment, we can see objectives one and three placed by the Necrons. We're gonna be fighting on a 44 by 30 mat, and I can tell you that no mats were harmed in the making of this video. You can see the Necrons deployment there. Over on the Dark Angels, we can see where they have placed objectives two and four, and we are ready to get started as we look to go to the Dark Angels for turn one. In the movement phase, we're going to see the Black Knights reposition. They are going to keep within six inches of the Talon Master so they can reroll ones to wound. Next up, we're going to see the Tac Marines. They are just going to move up to start to uh, occupy this objective. A bit of a mistake here by the Dark Angels as you score victory points in the command phase, so not occupying this at the start cost them a point. The Ravenwing Bikers, as well as the Talon Master, are going to stay put to reroll ones to hit with Grim Resolve. And this is an overlook at the board at the end of the movement phase. With no Psychers on the board, we go straight to the shooting phase, and the Ravenwing Bikes are going to target the Wraiths with their Bolters. And this is where we have a question on Bolter Discipline. So normally these things get two shots each, and there's five bikes. That would be ten shots. Does Bolter Discipline mean they get 20 shots? That's how we read it, and that's what we rolled out. And, you know, after re-rolling the ones due to Grim Resolve because they didn't move, they're going to get 16 total hits. So putting down a ton of fire against these Wraiths. Strength 4, Toughness 5 means they need 5s to wound, however. Uh, we will re-roll 1s due to the Talon Master being close, and they're going to get 7 wounds in total. 7 3-up saves will be taken. There's no cover or anything. The Talon Master strips all of that for units within 6 inches. They will fail 2 of those, and the Wraiths will take 2 wounds. Next up, the Black Knights target the Wraiths. They will get 8 shots with their Plasma Talons, needing 3s. They only hit 4 times, which is uh, below average. Then they're going to roll up to wound, and they will get three wounds, re-rolling ones. And that's going to be three saves coming over to the Wraiths. They're going to roll those out, and each one will be made. The Wraiths are just fine. Next up, we're going to see the Talon Master. He's going to first fire his twin assault cannon at the Wraiths. He's going to get 12 shots, and he is going to hit with 10 of those on threes. He then gets nine wounds. And then we're going to see uh, the Wraiths, after re-rolling the ones, we're going to see the Wraiths take uh, nine armor saves of three up, and they are going to fail three of those. So the first Wraith in the front will be cut down, and two will be assigned to that second Wraith. Next up, the Twin Heavy Bolter will shoot in, into them as well, and instead of six, I'm guessing he gets 12 due to Bolter Discipline. I hope this is right. Uh, rolls those out, and he is going to get 11 hits. Holy cow. And uh, then he's going to get to uh, roll out the wounds. He will need fours, and this is where it kind of catches him. Um, even though he gets to re-roll a few ones, only three wounds are going to go through. Uh, the Wraiths are going to take armor saves, and two are actually going to fail, so that second one will be cut down, but still one remains. And that will be it for the Dark Angels. I've always been told when you play Necrons, you want to be sure you cut down a unit in full, because if you don't, they will reanimate and come back to haunt you. So we'll have to see what happens. Necrons going to turn one. They're going to spend two CP for sub-repair routines. They're going to bring back one Wraith. 
So one of those wraiths did make it back onto the board. Next up, we're going to see the warriors make a move up. Uh, we're playing that you have to be uh, touching these buildings in order to shoot through these windows. So these warriors are going to step up to that as well as occupy the objective. Next, we're going to see the other warriors move uh, up, kind of swinging around this building. Uh, six of them are going to draw a line of sight, and I'm a little curious on the rules of how ninth works with line of sight. Uh, if it's, uh, you know, if six can see, only six can shoot. That's kind of the way that we're playing it. Some of these models didn't make it around the building. Next up, we're going to see the race. They rolled a four on a D6, so they are going to move 16 inches, and they are also going to play adaptive subroutines for one CP. So this is going to get them quickly up the board and allow them to charge um, after advancing. Uh, next up, we're going to see the Cryptek. He's going to play the Veil of Darkness, so he is going to disappear along with those destroyers, and then we're going to move on to the shooting phase after seeing these destroyers pop up. The Necron Warriors are going to shoot first at the Ravenwing Black Knights. Uh, only six are shooting. They need threes to hit. They will get uh, three hits. Uh, they will get two wounds needing fives, and then the Black Knights are going to roll armor saves on three plus, and they save both, so they're good. Next up, we're going to see the other warrior unit. They're going to do the same thing, only all 10 of them are going to get to fire. Uh, needing threes, unfortunately, they only get four hits as well. Um, two wounds are going to result, result of that, and then two more three-up armor saves are made by the Black Knights, so they are uh, looking to be in good shape. Next up, the Destroyers are going to play everybody's favorite, Extermination Protocols. They need threes to hit. They're going to get four on the original, targeting the Ravenwing Bikers. Uh, on the re-roll for Extermination Protocols, they will tally up two more. The Dark Angel player did play High Speed Focus, giving them uh, the Jink ability. There are six wounds that are going to happen after re-rolls, and there will be three failed saves from the Dark Angel player. So this is going to be D3 damage, and it resulted in two each. Um, it's going to be three bikes removed uh, after they've taken these saves. The Wraiths are going to announce a charge into the Black Knights, and they will use a CP to do Overwatch. I think this is new for 9th edition. And in doing this, they are going to get two hits. Uh, I did a reroll here for the Talon Master. I think that counts. Uh, that's going to convert into one wound, and then the Wraiths are going to take a save, and they are good on a 3+. plus. So they roll a 4 on 2d6, which is just enough to get into contact. One less, and they would have been short, but they do make it in, and uh, they're going to launch six attacks with their Vicious Claws. And uh, they're going to get five hits with these uh, out of six. Uh, this is going to cause three wounds onto the Black Knights, and saves are going to be forced to be taken. There's going to be one failed save only, so one bike will be cut down. And then the bikes we're going to see pile in. They are going to take seven attacks with their Corvus Hammer, needing threes. So they're going to get five hits. Those hits are going to convert into three wounds, and then the armor saves are going to be taken, or invulnerable saves. Uh, they're all going to be good for the wraiths, so these two are going to stay locked in combat. And turn one over for the Necrons, I think it went okay. I thought we would be looking at some dead Black Knights on that turn. They really pushed up the board. We can see the Necron Warriors are occupying both of their objectives. Uh, Veil of Darkness getting used, and now the Destroyers are uh, pushed all the way up the board. The Wraiths um, used a, a CP to get into combat as well as advance. Somehow the Black Knights have survived that. Those two were locked up. They didn't eliminate any units, but they did cause some pretty good damage. So the Ravenwing bikes did a morale. Everything is all good, and um, you know, Tac Marines are occupying an objective on their side. So as we go to Dark Angel's turn two, uh, it feels like they're a little on the back foot, but anything possible at this point. And at the start of the turn, we're going to see these Ravenwing bikes uh, move up in front of these destroyers. Uh, the objective here is to try to tie these units up and uh, see if they can't get some damage done. The Talon Master will follow suit, and they're going to dump some shots into these guys before they charge. Next, we're going to see the Tactical Marines. They're going to move up to the piece of terrain here where they can fire through the windows. That's just how we're playing this. Not sure if they can get line of sight through their own units. We counted this as being able to see, so they're going to roll out three hits, actually, needing threes, but they're not going to get any wounds. Next up, we're going to go to the Ravenwing Bikers in the shooting phase. They're going to take eight shots with their Bolter Discipline, and they're going to land seven hits, also needing threes. 
they're going to convert that into three wounds, and that's going to force some uh, saves by the destroyers, and they're going to fail two of them due to the uh, tactical doctrine giving them the uh, minus one AP. So uh, that'll be two wounds on one of those uh, destroyers. Next up, the Talon Master is going to let loose with his assault cannon, taking 12 shots, and he's going to get 10 hits. And uh, quite a quite an effort there. That is going to convert into nine wounds. And the destroyers are going to have to make several saves here. And rolling those out, they are only going to fail three, if you can believe that. So uh, only three more damage goes. It will cut one of those destroyers down, two wounds going on to another one. Next up, he will fire with his heavy bolter that will not result in uh, any damage. Charges are announced from the Ravenwing Bikes and the Talon Master. When all the dice are rolled, there's no damage on this. So we flip over to the Wraiths, who were nominated to attack next, and they are going to lash out at these knights. And they're going to get four hits on their six attacks. That is going to convert into four wounds. And there will be three failed saves uh, due to the APs. So they're going to totally knock these guys down. That's six wounds in total. That'll take out three bikes. And they're going to consolidate three inches. Next up, the destroyers are going to attack. They're going to get uh, three hits. And that's going to convert into one wound and there will be an armor save that is going to be made, so nothing happening here. And to end of turn recap for the Dark Angels, the Black Knights were cut down on their own turn, so you guys will have to let me know if I got something wrong with that. Um, I left them locked up in combat. I guess I could have played a stratagem to pull them out and shoot. Um, that wasn't done. Uh, you can see the results, so very frustrating for the Dark Angels. Over to the Necrons for turn two. And up for the Necrons, we're going to see these Wraiths move into an unfailable charge range against the Dark Angels here. We're also going to see a unit of the Warriors move up to attempt to get shots onto the uh, the Dark Angels, uh, the, the tactical squad. Um, after looking at it afterwards, we decided they couldn't draw line of sight. But these Warriors, on the other hand, standing still can. They're going to take eight shots, and they're going to get three hits. Uh, only eight were in range. They're not going to do any damage, however. Next over, we're going to, the, uh, the rates are going to announce a charge, and they're going into the Ravenwing Bikers and the Talon Master. Uh, they will get three attacks in the Ravenwing. Uh, two of the three will hit. There will be a wound. However, he is going to make a save. Um, the uh, damage against the Talon Master didn't go through, and they're going to fight back, landing four of five hits, and then that is going to convert into two wounds against the Wraiths coming from these bikers. So two saves are going to be taken. One of those will be failed, and one will be passed. So there will be a wound that goes on to a Wraith. The Talon Master and the Destroyers decide to play slap fight with each other, and there's no damage going out either way uh, between those two. End of turn for the Necrons felt a bit uneventful, uh, but depending on how many rules that we got right or wrong, it was a pretty big overall turn for the Necrons as they eliminated the uh, Black Knights. So still controlling the two objectives on their side of the board, as well as the having the Talon Master and the Ravenwing Bikes pretty much surrounded. Uh, those wraiths are really nasty in close combat from, uh, from what I'm discovering. So it looks pretty bleak for the Dark Angels at this point. We've had some discussions on maybe what would have been had those wraiths been eliminated in the first turn, but it's uh, all water under the bridge at this point. Dark Angels, turn three. And we measured this up before nudging models here, but the Talon Master is going to play intractable, and that's going to allow him to fall back out of combat, and he's going to move around and make uh, the Cryptek the closest model, which should allow him to target him in the shooting step. So getting a bit cheeky here from the Dark Angels. Um, and then we're going to see the Tactical Marines. They're going to move up to the piece of terrain so they can get a uh, line of sight to the Necron Warriors. Steady Advance is going to be played for 1 CP, allowing them to use Bolter Discipline. And they're going to fire out 10 shots and get 8 hits on those Necron Warriors. Five of those are going to convert into wounds, and the Necrons will take armor saves. There will be two failed, so two Necron Warriors uh, cut down. 
Next up, the Talon Master will target the Cryptek being the closest visible model. The Assault Cannon is going to get 12 shots and he's going to hit on 8 of those. That is going to result in 5 wounds, needing 3s. The Cryptek is going to uh, take armor saves, or invulnerable saves I should say, and he's going to fail 3 of them, needing 5s. So there will be three wounds going on to the Cryptek. Then the Heavy Bolter will fire out with six uh, shots. It will get five hits. That will convert into three wounds, and the Cryptek again having to take some, uh, some invulnerable saves, and it will result in two failed saves. So Slay the Warlord going to the Dark Angels. They just tied this game up at four. The Wraiths are going to go first in combat. They're going to hit with five out of six of their attacks. They're going to get three wounds that are going to go through, and the Ravenwing Bikes are going to fail all of their armor saves. So at two damage each, uh, each one of those bikers will be cut down, and then we're going to see some consolidation moves uh, from the Destroyers as well as the Wraiths. So while the score was tied up at four, it may be too little too late for the Dark Angels as they are running out of units. We're going over to the Necrons for turn three. Reanimation protocols were missed across the board. We're going to see the Wraiths move up into a charge range that will be unfailable for them. And then we're going to move on to the shooting phase where the Warriors are going to open up fire on the Talon Master. They're going to get uh, 12 shots, some in rapid fire range. They will hit with five of those. Rolling those out, needing fives, they're going to get three wounds that go through, and armor saves are taken by the Talon Master. He is going to take one damage from these warriors. Next up, the other warrior unit is going to target the Talon Master as well. They are not in rapid fire range, but they will do no damage. And moving over to the Destroyers, they're going to play Extermination Protocols for a CP. They're going to get to reroll all hits and uh, failed wounds. So rolling out six shots, all six of these are going to get hits after rerolls. We're then going to roll these out to wound and get to reroll these as well. So at the end of the day, they're going to get four wounds that go through, and it's going to be four saves coming up from the Talon Master. I think he's in trouble here. Uh, he will fail two of these. It's going to result in four damage, taking him up to five. Next, we will see the Wraith's charge in the charge phase. There will be Overwatch from the Talon Master. He'll spend a CP to do that, and he's going to launch out 18 shots, hitting on sixes. He's going to get four hits, and out of those four hits, uh, that's going to cause four wounds. He is re-rolling due to uh, his special rule. And the Wraiths will have to take four saves. They're going to fail three of those, so one of those Wraiths will get cut down. The other one will make it into combat, and he is going to launch out his uh, three attacks, and he is going to hit with all three of those with his Vicious Claws. Two of those are going to convert into wounds. And then there will be a failed armor save by this Talon Master. A final CP is used by the Dark Angels for a command reroll to see if he can stay alive. It fails. He does not explode. But that will be Slay the Warlord for the Necrons. And we'll see a consolidation here from the Wraiths. And at the close of the turn for the Necrons, uh, they are going to take the lead 7-4, to four, and we are going to go ahead and call this game and close it out for the Dark Angels. It will be a 7-4 to four victory for the Necrons. Dark Angels, um, I feel like they did okay in this particular game. Uh, it could have really went either way if those uh, Wraiths would have got destroyed in turn 1. Uh, I feel like they would have been able to apply a lot of pressure on the destroyers as well as, um, you know, push the warriors on objectives. So uh, that game really could have went either, either way, and turn one was um, really a, uh, a turn where the Necrons happened to weather the storm. They brought one of those wraiths back using a stratagem, and uh, they were able to just wreak havoc uh, once they made it into the Dark Angels' lines. So really hope you enjoyed this uh, battle report. Uh, it is our first time playing 40,000 again in a very long time. Let me know in the comments what you thought. You know, what rules did we get wrong? What stratagems maybe should we have used? Uh, we're not experts by any means when it comes to the rules and to the stratagems and the overall tactics of 40k. 
So would be more than interested to know what you think we could have done differently to uh, to turn the tide of this game or, or have a different outcome. Uh, thanks so much for your support. Thanks for watching. There'll be more Warhammer 40,000 battle reports to come in the near future, and uh, we'll see you next time.